Hiya folks, today we're going to be looking at a little RV150 scrap lawnmower that Gary picked up. Gary can't do it, he's had to uh, isolate indoors. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but uh, we're going to have a look at it, try and get it running for him. And also, we've got some little things to have a look at as well. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, well, as I mentioned, we've got um, a little RV150 lawnmower to look at. I don't know anything about it. I, I gather it's got a leaking petrol tank on it, but um, I don't know whether it was a runner. I think he found it outside someone's house and uh, brought it home while I was away. So um, Gary can't actually do it at the moment, and he's not going to be putting out any videos for the next couple of weeks because... Um, Obviously, we've just come back from Cyprus. We've been away for three weeks ourselves, and uh, we're having to self-isolate and do a couple of tests while we're away. We're about halfway through that at the moment, so we, we're stuck at home. Gary and Stacy, and obviously the children, are also having to isolate because um, Stacy actually caught uh, COVID-19. And uh, don't forget, they've got their daughter, Olivia, which is a uh, high dependency care, 24-hour care Olivia has, and now she's actually caught it as well. So. You know, then also we just phoned up today as well, and uh, also that one of their son, little Harry's, got it as well. So there's three out of the five households that have got the COVID-19, and um, they're working their way through that. So we send our best wishes over to them, as you can appreciate. So um, if you want to go over to Project Man's channel and just leave a little well wish down there, that would be greatly accepted. But uh, as you can understand, we can't go over there. They can't come over here. So that's the reason why I'm having a little look at this lawnmower for him. And also, just as uh, a thank you, I did send the Versa tray over to uh, Top Conquer, Phil. And uh, I didn't want any money for it, but he's kindly been down on my Amazon wish list. And he said, thanks for the tray, Martin. Hope these will be of help. And that's from Phil Top Conquer. And always handy, the old microfiber cloth. So thanks very much, Phil. You didn't have to do that, mate. I've done that as a favor. I don't give to receive, as you well know. But uh, that, again, thank you very much indeed for that. Now, you might have, met, might have realized in one of my last videos, I think when I was doing the Vauxhall Signum DPF, when I removed it or when I was putting it back on, the black gloves I wear. Now, don't forget, I'm not used to wearing gloves. For When, when I used to sort of repair stuff back in the 70s and the 80s, we never had gloves on. We had stuff which you probably heard of if, if you're in the motor trade called barrier cream and it was like a cream like a thick cream you used to rub it in your hands and that used to protect you and you still got your feeling for doing things up and undoing things and stuff like that but obviously we're now in the, the 2020s 20s or the 2020s whatever you want to call them and uh, health and safety is quite prevalent now and also people frown upon you if they see you not wearing hand protection so i mean i've used gloves but i do forget to put them on quite a lot and uh, let me just show you one, one of the sets that I've already got here. Now we're forever buying them, and we do actually use them, although we may not show it on camera. Now these are supposed to be uh, nitrile, nitrile gloves, N nitrile, nitrile, but whatever. And so are these ones. I got a pack of these ones here, and these are okay. As you can see, look, they've got good stretchability. They're only a thin one, but again, they do tend to rip an hour really for one use only. Uh, Gary bought a set as well, black gloves, and as you can see these ones here, if I pull that, they just snap, look. Whereas these ones, they don't. So these ones actually are the pair I had on in the, in the DPF video, look. Absolutely rubbish rubber, so although they might be cheaper, don't always go for the cheap brands, but someone did reach out. Now I've had a few different types of gloves in the past, and um, I always normally go for the cheap ones, but that's what happens. And then someone said, try the grippers gloves. Now, I have actually had these before, and I've just bought another set. I think these cost uh, £15, something like that. And you get a box of 50, pair, 50 pieces, which I presume is 25 pairs. I'm not too sure. But these are uh, more than one use. Now, these are really strong gloves, these ones. I use a large. And let's have a look. First time I'll put one of these on. And again, they do fit a lot better than them cheap ones. And you've got good finger touch as well. And I say the rippability of these is very, very good. So I'll be using these in future. And I will be steering away from them cheap ones, which are, these actually don't look very good as well. They're very shiny as well. I mean, look at that, look. And these are very, very frustrating when you're using them. So don't always go for the cheap ones. Grippers appears to be a good break, a good break, a good make. And they're chemical resistant, silicone free, 100% nitrile. 
and touchscreen friendly, whatever that means. Oh, you can use them on your iPhones as well and things like that, your, your, your mobile phones or whatever. So that's what I'm going to be using now. And as I say, they cost me $15.99. So these ones, although we will keep them, they'll, they'll just sort of, I don't know, maybe for spraying and stuff like that when you're using the spray gun or whatever. So use them for powder coating maybe. So that's that. So again, thanks very much, Phil, for that. Anyway, so that's that. So let's get outside now. I'm going to go and bring that lawnmower in. We'll have a little look at it. If it's a fuel tank fault where it's got a leak, then uh, I might have to source a separate tank for that. But it is a common fault on these little RV150 engines that they do a replacement or a modification fuel tank on it. But less of the waffle. Let's get it in there and we'll see what we can do with it. Right, okay, let's get that uh, grass bag off of there. It looks to be in a bit of a state. Nice that the grass bag's in good condition as well. It doesn't appear to be ripped at all. So let's have a little quick look around it before we do anything. Right, so I don't actually know anything about this lawnmower whatsoever, apart from that it was a trash pick to lawnmower. And what I've seen there straight away is that someone's appeared to put some tape around there. So I'm assuming that somewhere down there may be a crack. I'm not too sure. It appears to be a little RV 150 engine. It don't look like it's had any sort of maintenance done to it. It's probably just been used and abused basically by the looks of it. Everything seems to be working and in order. Just a bit dirty. It is plastic decked and it also has a self-drive mechanism on it as well. So it is a self-drive mower. We can check that shortly. I'm looking at the governor arm. The governor arm appears to be moving freely at the moment. So that's not a problem. Let's take the uh, air filter cover off. Right, so it has a decent air filter in it. It's a bit damp at the front there, but uh, it has been standing out in the open. So we won't worry too much about that. There is a bit of oil residue on the cover there and also on the inside. So it may have been tipped up the wrong way and um, oil might have escaped through the crankcase through this breather pipe up here into the air filter housing. So um, that's what normally happens when they've been uh, sort of uh, tipped up. So I'm not too worried about that. The linkages all appear to be in order. It doesn't appear to be priming due to the fact that there's probably no fuel in it. Nice to see one of these without the um, fuel cap, which tends to separate here. So that looks like a quite a new head, uh, quite a new one on there actually. So maybe it has broken in the past and someone's uh, replaced it. Yeah, I'd say that was a new cap on there, even though it's got my dirty fingerprints all over it. Looking at the inside, I don't think that's done much work whatsoever. So it smells of fresh fuel, although there's nothing in it. So I may just put a bit of a, what I've got left. All I've got left over here is some two-stroke, actually, so that won't hurt it. So I'm going to tip a bit of that in it, which won't hurt it in the slightest, although it will make it smoky, but I'm not worried about that. This is purely for test purposes. So I want to see if there's any noticeable leaking low down, because sometimes they fracture low down. Sometimes they fracture a bit higher up, so there we go. This is probably about 300 millilitres gone in there. At least we've got some fuel in it. The arm mechanisms seem to be working okay for the engine cutoff or kill switch, and also the drive cable seems to be operating. So I'll, I'm just pulling them because I just want to check that the cables aren't seized up. So this appears to be working here. So I'm just going to tip it back. Again, these, these are sort of preliminary checks which I'm doing before I actually try to attempt to start the lawnmower. So let's just tip it back first of all. And I'm tipping it back for two reasons. One, to try and get that fuel tank, get some fuel up on the side of the fuel tank to see if there's any more leaks, because I ain't got a full tank of fuel there. I'm looking underneath. The belt is still on there. It feels a bit graunchy, although that looks like a pretty new belt or someone's painted it. The uh, cable, oh, blink dog poo. <laughs> I've just gone over some bleating dog poo there, look, just dropped off. I'm going to have to clean that away. The um, the belt is still on for the drive. Let me go and get some tissue, hold on. Can't have that, lucky I didn't touch that. That's why you should have gloves on, folks. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? I've been doing all that talking about having gloves on, and then that happens. So I'm just going <laughs> to lift this up quickly, pick that dog poo dollop up, and then put some gloves on. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Right, and I'm just gonna put a pair of them cheapo, nasty ones on actually. I know they're probably gonna rip, but I've gotta use them. It's either use them or throw them away. And they cost money at the end of the day. I think they cost 13 quid. So, these are so crap, these. Even sometimes when you pull them on, hey, I look like they look, it's just ripped through already, look. That's how you know you've got cheap rubbish gloves, but, right, so that's that. So, back to where we was. The blade's on the right way, the flicks are pointing upwards. We've got some oil underneath here, some residue there. So I'm looking around the boss to see if that's been leaking, if we've got a oil seal problem, which we haven't. So I would just imagine that the oil was crept down through the base of the actual lawnmower there, and it's just gathered down there, run down behind the grass and just gathered down there. So that's what I think has happened there. So again, I'm not worried about that. So everything looks to be in order underneath here. So let's tip that back down again. There we go. I'm gonna let it settle for a minute because the other thing I wanna check before we start this up is the um, oil level. And sure enough, one thing that always happens with these is that the oil tube starts to spin and come out when you do that. So I'm just gonna get a pair of grips down there, hold the bottom of it, there we go. Just stops it lifting out and any of that grass dropping inside Again, we don't know what the owner's done with this or whatever, so we've got to start from the beginning when assessing this lawnmower, and before even starting it up, we don't know what they've done, so we'll just put that back in there. Just screw that up to the nipping point and then back it off again, and then see what the level is. Right, so, yeah, we're in parameters. We're in between the um, upper and lower levels there so i'm happy that we can go for a start up oh, now we'll just nip up that base there just so it don't pull out there we go that's done right well i can't see any signs at the moment of fuel leaking so perhaps gary might have uh, got that wrong maybe he was just going by that term um, tape there or maybe the leak is somewhere higher up i don't know so we'll leave that for now i'm just gonna lower it down i've not even checked the spark plug yet so we're just going for a start up basically there we go. Right, so we've got fuel in there now, so it doesn't appear to be priming. We've definitely got fuel in there with the fuel pipes connected. So it could be a blocked up carb issue. Look at these gloves already, look. <laughs> Let's just put that fuel cap back on for now. Although that looks like a new fuel uh, bulb to me, I might be wrong. Let's just give it a pull over. Not expecting it to start. Right, it doesn't appear to be anything there. And it does appear to have any fuel coming through. Right, okay, so we know where we are so far. We've got a non-starter. Now we start our checks for getting this thing running. Right, so okay, so I'm of the opinion we have got a fuel delivery problem on this, but while I've got it up in the air, I will check for spark first by doing a check, uh, spark test first. So I've got my spark plug tester right there. So we'll just connect this up by pushing that into there and connecting that onto there like that. Now I'm just gonna turn this light off folks here so that you possibly can get to see the spark if I pull that. So I'm gonna be taking the brake off so I haven't got to hold the handle up there. So I'll put that on there like that. And let's just give that a gentle pull. Oh, we've got a lovely spark, look at that, look. So we know we've got spark. So we've got a good spark. Let's take that spark plug tester off. I'm not gonna take the spark plug out for the moment because I'm gonna be leaving the cap off because I'll be looking at the carburetor. So first things first is to take the air filter housing off. Get me old 10 mil DeWalt out and let's just whiz these two carb air cleaner bolts out. And also the one that holds the bracket on at the front. Right, so. Pull them forward. We have got a little um, crankcase breather pipe there at the top which comes off. So that's all we've got there. There we go, let's pull that off. Right, everything there seems to be in order. The spring seems to be okay there. The um, thing I can instantly see is that at the back there, the priming pipe had split. There you go, there, look. The priming pipe was actually split and that should be pushed onto the primer. Hence it wasn't priming. So before we do anything else, I will repair that by cutting it back there 
and then putting it back on and then we'll try priming it before we go any further. So just get me old uh, side cutters out there. I must get some new ones of these. I think I'll get a pair of them Nipex ones, which I've seen uh, Mendit Man use. So let's put that on there. All right, we just slide that back on there. Now all I'm gonna do now is literally, oh, there we go, did you see that? And we've also got a fuel leak on that side, as you can see, look. When I'm pressing the primer bulb to prime it, we've got fuel coming out there. So that hose is actually no good. So I am gonna take the complete hose off and replace it. Yeah, that's uh, the problem why we're getting no fuel to the carb. There we go. So I've got some spare tube. I'm gonna cut a bit off, put the new bit on, and I'll come back to you in a second. Right, okay, I've got a new piece of uh, hose there. Just gonna put that on there like that. And also back on to our primer bulb. Right, so if we put that on there like that, and just press that primer bulb now. Oh yeah, can you see the fuel coming up that pipe, look. So that's drawing up fuel lovely now. And if you look in the carb, you can actually see it pushing in, which we weren't getting before. So before we go any further, I'm just going to replace the uh, air filter housing. Just want to prove that this is working correctly, and that could have been just what the problem was, you see. Put that hose up there, connect that crankcase breather up. Let's quickly put that plug back on there. Plug cap. Lower it down. We'll leave it on there. Let's give it a few primes. Yeah, I can see that priming excellently now. We've got this. I did have that pulled up there, so let's just pull that up there. Pull this and see what happens. There we go. Started up, then it's running a tree. Let's just raise that tick over a little bit. Well, there we go. It looks like this little lawnmower was chucked out because it had a fuel leak and it may be that it wasn't the tank that was leaking. It may be that the fuel line was pouring fuel out as you saw at the front there. So um, we've actually repaired that. I don't think it needs to have a carb strip down because it's running absolutely fine. All I have done is tightened up the, the tick over a little bit and got it revving to the right, right levels. And it's quite a common thing on these RV150s is that when you let the dead man off, the brake, if you want to call it that, to incorporate the brake, you get like a brrrr noise. And the little brake pad, which rubs on the flywheel to slow it down, I would imagine that's come off. And uh, we can confirm that by taking these three 10 mil nuts off to remove the upper cover and see where the brake pad should be. And you'll probably find that the metal bracket is clacking on the side of the flywheel. So let's have a look at that and investigate that. All right, so it just goes to show you that, pardon my elbows, there was nothing actually the matter with this lawnmower. And it's probably got thrown out because people have tried to pull and pull and pull and start it and it wouldn't start. Saw petrol leaking out of it and then realized that, uh, oh, it's probably had its day. So let's take that off. Okay, well, that one's actually intact. But let me show you what I was talking about, and it's a common thing on these. If you see this little pad there, can you see that there, that little brake arm, that little lever there, there's a big screw which attaches via this bracket, and there's a little brake pad on there, and it's not uncommon for these brake pads to actually wear away. And in fact, this one's not really doing much at all, as you can see anyway they wear away and then that metal bracket swings and hits the flywheel and where it goes over that screw for example look you can see that screw there when it's spinning fast and you let the hand 
lever off to stop the engine, that metal bracket comes into contact and you can hear it clacking. Grrr, and what it is, is that metal bracket hitting the flywheel there. There's two ways around it. Well, there's actually three ways around that. If there is no pad on there, which we're lucky enough, we have got a pad, although it's not really doing much, you can um, either get a new or source a new bracket by undoing that screw and fitting a new bracket on there. And that bracket, as you can see there, also operates the, um, this one operates a little lever there, little metallic strip there, which makes contact and connects up to the coil there to cut your supply off. When you're in that position, the uh, engine won't run because it's earthed out, the coil is being earthed out through that cable there via the bracket, via the actual body of the actual um, engine itself. And if I actually pull this handle up, can you see that bracket separates from that piece of metal? And then when it's open circuit like that, that allows a spark to work. You hear a lot of people say, oh, listen for the click. Well, with this type, you don't get a click because there's no micro switch on this one. It's just a, a little bent piece of metal which has to make contact with that bracket as you can see there so providing you make sure that that does separate because the only way that this lawnmower would start by pulling that handle up like that via this cable is if that is separated when it comes in contact if your lawnmower won't stop when you release the lever like that when it comes back and it won't stop you want to make sure that there's no crap in between that touching pieces of metal there because that could have a load of crap or grease in there or even a bit of dirt or whatever and if that stops in that position and it's not stopping the lawnmower right in there is where the connection is to, to stop the lawnmower to earth it out basically so that's that as far as stopping the clacking noise you can take that bracket off and put a new one on there so what a lot of people do and i've actually done it myself is you when that pad's not on there you can just bend that bracket back a bit it's quite a strong bracket, you bend it back. Or, what I've done in the past, you can actually cut the bracket off low level there with a, a little Dremel tool so that the bracket doesn't actually stop. As you can see, it's not really doing much anyway, that brake. They're never very good on these little RV150s. So, uh, yeah, that's the way to stop the grrr noise. You might hear it on a lot of people when they've serviced the mower. And it does tend to put people off. You might have a lovely looking mower like this, for example. And then when you let the brake off after you've tested it to someone, it makes a terrible clacking noise. And that's what it would be. It would be the pads falling off and uh, the slight modification to bend it back so it don't make in contact, put a new one on or cut the bracket actually off because it's not really doing a lot anyway. But you must leave this on. You can't take the bracket off totally because of that little uh, grounding point there. So anyway, that's that. Well, while I've got it down this far as well, I'm just going to blow all this carb off. I'm not going to take the carb off. There's no need to take it off now. As we can see there, it's priming a treat now. Look at that pipe there, look. Absolutely fine. So we know that's working fine. I'm going to give this a little dousing with some... Um, some spray, blow it off with a compressor, air compressor all around there, clean all this up. It doesn't appear to be leaking, so the only way I'm going to surely find out that is to fill the fuel tank right away up and uh, test it that way. But other than that, it just wants a general clean up. I don't think the blade even needs sharpening. So I'm going to do that now. I'll come back to you when I've done all this, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, there you go, folks. Nice and clean now. All we've done there is put a bit of carb cleaner on there, all over the top there where it was all greasy. It just makes makes the new owner feel that it's been maintained. Now, we saw the state of that at the beginning, and if you look at that now, that looks absolutely lovely. The only points that really need lubrication there is the pivot point under the um, butterfly there. It's a little Normally, there's a little piece of uh, felt underneath there. So you can put a drop of lubrication just under there. And what I normally do with these type of carbs, just put a little drop of three in one, just on that little pad there, that little sponge pad there. Literally, only on there. You don't want to go lubricating all this under there thinking that you're going to do it any good. Because as you can see, they're designed to be dry, these things. 
and by putting loads of lube all over there what you're just basically going to introduce is all the uh, grass cuttings and dust to actually just stick to the top of the car and it will get filthy again so the only piece that needs lubricating is just under that little you can see that little pivot point there make sure the springs working correctly as it seems to be there and uh, you'll have no problems at all so that's the maintenance all that i've needed to really do with that i've just got to clean up the rest of the deck now uh, as you can see i've removed that i will put another plug in it i'll put another b2lm new plug in that and apart from that everything else seems fine i'll leave the brake as it is because it is there it's not really doing much but um it is making a little bit of a noise but um that was probably more to do with the rust that's been on the uh, flywheel as well so uh, i'm just going to clean the deck up now and we'll come back and take a little look of it after i've done that Right, there we go, folks. All cleaned up, all back together. It's had an oil change. It's had a new plug-in. We've uh, tidied all the deck up and give it a bit of a wash down. And let's just show you around it before we take it outside to start it out. So I'm sure you'll agree that it looks a lot better than when it first came in. It's got a few marks down here which are scrapes along the plastic, which we can't do anything about. But I'm sure you remember all this was absolutely filthy and all around the back there, there was full of um, debris and oil and all that stuff where it was been tipped over and leaked oil everywhere. So it's looking very nice now, nice and clean. And obviously when you look in between the car breads now, you can see that it's been serviced and maintained. And uh, as I say, it's a fully cleaned up version of what it was. I've done a lot to it. As you know, I've changed the spark plug, put some oil in it. We've repaired that little hose there. We've given it a good clean there. We couldn't find any leak, but as I say, I've still got that two stroke oil and petrol mix in the in the engine, but I'm not too worried about that. It runs all right, we've adjusted the tick over on it. We've just put some cable ties around the handle there because them cables were flapping about a bit. And uh, we've literally just give it a nice wipe over, bring back a little bit of the luster that it was lacking. It is a Sovereign lawnmower. Normally they've got a sticker on the front there, whether this has been pulled off or whether it's come off, I don't know, but uh, let's take it outside now and uh, see if it runs okay. Right, folks there she is in all her glory so let's not forget that um, it's got two stroke in it so it's stone cold as you can see like I'm touching the exhaust there hasn't been started up since we pulled it out give it a few primes all right let's try that pull the lever up there we go anything now it's out in the open I may just speed that tick over up a little bit more it's only one screw it's not a problem but the bag is inflated and normally when you've got a lawnmower which is running too slow you find that it may not fill the bag up so but this just seems to be filling the bag up okay but I will speed it up I'm not quite happy with the speed of it There you go. Well, that's a nice little job there. As I say, I'm expecting a little bit of smoke there because we don't know how much oil was in the um, exhaust. Bearing in mind, it could have been tipped over. It showed signs of being tipped over, so uh, that's what I would expect. I'll run this for about 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, when you put some fresh fuel in there, some standard fuel, everything should be fine. There's no problems with this whatsoever. It's a great little mower. It's probably worth about 70 pounds, something like that. It should go easy. It's an easy starter. Height adjustment with only one lever, so it's a little sovereign. Happy days. I'm not going to be selling this one. I'll give this one back to Gary. I've just done a bit of menial, menial work and it weighs out of action for a while. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Don't forget to check out my other lawnmower playlists and also any other vehicle repair videos that you might find interesting. I've got everything down in playlists. Hit the subscribe button down there if you're interested in my, my, my escapades with small engines and cars and stuff like that. And also ring the little notification bell and set your preferences to all. And that way, every time I do upload a video, you'll get a little ping or notified that YouTube that my video is now live. Thanks very much, folks. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.